my pulse raced at the astounding accomplishments of the mercenary known as Demon Lord. I forgot about my job and read everything I had on hand. Around the time Demon Lord received his nickname, South Belka showed signs of weariness regarding the war. Because the region was set up as a defense line to protect the birthplace of Belka in the north, the people's dissatisfaction had reached a climax. The cities declared themselves demilitarized and peacefully surrendered to the Allied forces. Unable to establish a defensive position, the Belkan army kept retreating to the north. The end of the war was fast approaching. I was given an opportunity to interview the former aces of the Belkin Air Force. Back then, they were the masters of the sky, and they had also known him. So I crossed the border to follow his trail. I wanted to capture the war and the demon lord from their point of view, to capture the voices of those who were there. Indigo Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 7th Air Division, 51st Tactical Fighter Squadron, Dimitri Heinrich, an ace whose precision and grace in flying earned him the title of Blue Heron. Today he has his hands full with the family business. Well, that day, right before I deployed, my airspace assignment was changed. Initially, my squadron was assigned to the Stable Eastern Front. That was changed to Area B7R, the round table where casualties were recorded at a fearsome pace. It's also the place where I met him. It was just two planes, him and an eagle. And yet our lead force didn't stand a chance against them. I could tell he was good, and it was going to be bad for us. But there was something else I noticed. He hesitated. A vulnerability that can be exploited. I was certain I would win. The pilot was still young. He had yet to master the rules of combat. But in the end, I was shot down. Bernard Schmidt, a man with the eyes of an owl. Groom Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force. 10th Air Division, 8th Tactical Fighter Squadron. Fighting with distinguished service on the battlefield, he earned the title of Ace with his uncanny ability to adapt quickly to the flow of battle. Oh, I had a bad feeling while I was flying towards the round table. Why were they having problems down in two mercenaries? I figured it was just temporary chaos and it'd be over by the time I got there. Pilots of the Belkin Air Force are true professionals, but when I saw the situation, I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought maybe my IFF was malfunctioning. There were still two enemies on the radar. Everyone else in my squadron had the same reaction. This is really happening. Every now and then, guys like that appear on a battlefield. Someone special, you know? I squint in my eyes and confirm the situation. Check the terrain, air currents, his plane, his maneuvers, and his remaining ammo. I figured I could do it. I knew what I was getting into, but he still outmaneuvered me beyond my expectation. Rot Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 2nd Air Division, 52nd Tactical Fighter Squadron, Detlef Fleischer, also known as the Red Swallow. With his skill and demeanor, he was practically a poster boy for the armed forces. Today, he is a professor of history at the University of Dinsmark. Back then, I was bursting with pride. I wanted to lead us to victory, for Belka's honor. Staying where it was nice and warm wouldn't accomplish anything. My flight's mission was to maintain air superiority in area B-7R, an essential area that we couldn't allow to be violated. 
That day, when I heard the order from HQ for reinforcements, I became angry. The station force was in chaos because of just two mercenaries. There was no way the mighty Belkin Air Force could lose to mere mercenaries. My pride was shot, and the round table was defiled. What went wrong? Whatever it may be, the fact remains I was forced to walk a different path in life than the one I had envisioned. Gelb Team is number two, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 5th Air Division, 23rd Tactical Fighter Squadron, Rainer Altman. He flew the skies of Directus during the capital's liberation, and he's still there to this day. I met him above this very sky. I can still hear the sound of the missile alerts from that day. I received an order to fly to Directus on my way back from an intercept mission on the Southern Defense Line. The order itself wasn't unusual. We kept being deployed from one mission to the next without receiving even the basic maintenance. But the situation was the same all around. We were late reaching the operational space. The station squadrons had already retreated and warning bells were going off in the city and the people were looking up to his plane, high above the sky. I, I couldn't see any emotion in his maneuvers. I didn't feel like I was fighting against a human being. I wanted to end that battle as quickly as possible. Silver Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 51st Air Division, 126th Tactical Fighter Squadron. Dietrich Kellerman. He was once the top ace at Belka and a fiery instructor at the Air Force Academy. In 1995, the Belkin Air Force sent him to the front lines to bolster troop morale. He was good. From what I'd heard about him, I thought he was still just a young mercenary. But he matured since then. He still wasn't perfect, but I could see he had come a long way towards understanding the rules of combat. What's important on the battlefield is to let go of hate, to survive, and to adhere to the rules you've set for yourself. These are the rules I've taught my students. And when I saw him, I could tell my time was done. A new generation had inherited the sky. There was no more need for an old soldier like me. Schnee Team Commander, former member of the Belkin Air Force, 22nd Air Division, 4th Tactical Fighter Squadron, Eric Hillenbrand. He never had great ambitions. All he ever hoped for was to make a living as a regular pilot. Today he works as a flight instructor for civilian pilots. The instant he shot me, I pulled the lever. <laughs> I barely managed to escape from my plane as it burst into flames. After drifting from the blast, I landed below the round table. It was a wide open, barren wasteland. How long would I have to wait for a rescue party? Radio interference within the round table was fierce. The odds of a distress signal actually reaching anyone was low. I was at a loss for what to do. Anyway, I'd really gone out with a bang this time. I took that as a sign it was time for me to retire. But just then, I heard a roaring overhead. It was his plane. Jealous of his calm flying form. Rather than wait for the rescue team, I began to walk toward the nearest base. I was driven by desire to get back up there and fight him again. Of course, it did take me three days to get there. This man was head of the command group and was known as the Vulture. Schwartz team commander, Dominic Zuboff. 
Former member of the Belkin Air Force, 13th Night Fighter Air Division, 6th Tactical Fighter Squadron. He fled after the final battle in order to avoid prosecution for various war crimes. He is still on the run and being hunted as an escaped killer. Sorry about the accommodations. It goes with the business. I'm not active during the day. Back then I was a shadow assassin, an escapee killer. Given the order, I'd even shoot down my own comrades. I received an order to take down deserting craft on that day. It was a typical assignment. But something unexpected happened. My target was no new recruit, but a top ace of the Belkin Air Force. And he just had to go and run straight into the chaos at the round table. The man was sharp, just like the rumors. But that wasn't the problem. The problem was that the mercenary team of Solo Wing and him were there. Thanks to them, I lost my target. I figured the least I could do was take them down in return. Of course, that was where my luck ran out. Every time I flew with him, his skill stood out. He was unstoppable. He was cool-headed and proud. A combat professional. Demon Lord fit him perfectly. Maybe the man was blessed by the goddess of war. Before long, everyone had taken notice of him. More and more would show up to watch him go off on sortie. Mercenaries or maintenance crew, it didn't matter. People wanted to burn his image to their memories. Hell, they weren't the only ones. <laughs> 